Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, we all know that how important it is to convert hard water into soft water. Soft water can be used for various purposes, for cleaning, for washing and even for drinking. Today we are going to study one of the most important methods to convert hard water into soft water and that is the ion exchange method. This process is also known as deionization or demineralization process. This is the modern development in water softening methods. Certain organic compounds possess a property like zeolite. That is, they are capable of exchanging ions. Such organic synthetic compounds are known as resins. There are two types of resins. One, cation exchange resin. The second is anion exchange resin. So over here, what we are going to do is, we are going to use both of these resins and we are going to pass hard water through it. And we will try removing all the impurities of the hard water. Once all the impurities of the hard water is removed, then we will try to remove all the dissolved gases which make the water hard water. Once that is also done, we will finally get soft water. Let us see how we can actually do it. First, let us study about the cation exchange resin. What do you mean by cation? Cation is nothing but a positive ion. So in this method, we are going to learn about the positive ions and how positive ions are used to remove the impurities of water. These resins are capable of exchanging rapidly with H plus ions. So whenever an H plus ion is present in a water in the form of impurity, this cation can go and rem help removing it. Cation exchange resins can be represented as RH2, so their exchange reaction with cations. For example, let's take calcium plus plus. Why plus plus? Because the valency of calcium is plus 2. That is the reason why we have taken plus plus. So we have RH2 plus Ca plus plus forming nothing but RCA. This Ca with two valencies goes over here and sticks with R forming RCA plus this H2 comes over here forming two H plus ions. So over here we can see not only the valency that is the number of elements on the reactant side and the product side is the same but also the charge. I have Ca plus plus which is plus two positive and over here I have two H plus that means one H plus plus one H plus that is two H plus. So this is also plus two positive. Now let us go on to the anion exchange resin. Anion is nothing but a negative ion. For example, in cation we had Ca++, we will have something here with minus minus. Why? Because anions are negative ions. These negative ions will react with some impurity in water and we will make sure that the, those impurities are also removed. These resins are capable of exchanging rapidly anions by OH- ions. Anion exchange resin can be represented as R-OH twice. So their exchange reaction with anions that is for example let us take SO4 minus minus ion. So we have R-OH plus SO4 minus minus giving me R-SO4 plus 2 OH minus. So let us see what exactly happened in this reaction. This SO4 which is 2 minus which has the valency of 2 goes and sticks with this R forming R-SO4. And for that this OH comes over here 2 OH minus. Again in the similar way not only the elements of the reactant side and the product side are balanced but also the charges on the reactant and the product side are also balanced. From the above it is clear that if hard water is passed first through cation exchange and then through anion exchanger the resulting water will be free from both cations and anions and the water is said to be deionized or demineralized. It is very important to remove all those dissolved minerals and ions in the water to convert the hard form of water into pure form of water and this method is not only used for removing temporary hardness but also for permanent hardness. So both the types of hardness of water can can be removed by using this method. So over here the impure water is passed through the cation exchanger and then through the anion exchanger and last through the gaseous chamber. Let us see the process of it. The process of ion exchange is carried out as follows. The first point, it consists of two cylindrical towers out of which the first tower consists of cation exchanger that is RH2 and the other consists of anion exchanger which is ROH twice. Now RH2 will remove impurities which are cationic for example let's say Ca++ whereas R-OH twice the second cylinder will remove impurities for example let's say SO4 minus minus. 
The hard or impure water is first allowed to pass through a tar containing cation exchanger which removes all the cations like Ca++, Mg++, Na+, Fa++, etc. and releases H plus ions. Let us see how exactly this happens with the help of a reaction. We have RH2. This RH2 is present in my cylinder, the cation exchange cylinder. Plus Ca++, Mg++ or 2Na+, all these are the impurities. So what exactly will happen over here? This Ca will go and join this R forming RCa plus 2H+. So instead of Ca++ ions, now what I will be having is just 2H+, ions. Similarly, instead of Mg++ ions, it will form RMG and over here I will be having 2H+, ions. RH2 plus 2Na plus will form RNA2. Why RNA2? Because over here I do not have Na++. Plus plus. I have 2 Na's with only one positive sign. So this will go and form Na2. But overall the positive signs over here were 2. And that's why the byproduct will be 2H+. Plus. The third point. Does the anions like chloride, sulfates and bicarbonates are converted into their corresponding acids HCl, H2SO4 and H2CO3. In other words, water from cation exchanger is free from all the cations but it is still acidic. Fourth point. This acidic water is then passed through another tar containing an anion exchanger where the acids are converted into water. So now the, all the acids which are going to form in the first cylinder are passed to the second cylinder with the water. So now my water does not have any positive ions. It only has acids. And in the second cylinder, those acids are also removed, making more water of it. So now R-OH2, this R-OH2 contains the second cylinder, the anionic cylinder. Plus 2HCl forms R-Cl2 plus 2H2O. So what happens over here? There is Cl over here. So twice Cl will go and stick to this R dash and this will go over here. Let us balance the first equation. All the other equations are similar to it. I have one R dash on this side, one R dash on this side. Now if I count the number of oxygens on the reactant side, they are two. On the product side also, they are two. The number of hydrogens on the reactant side, two plus two, that is four. On the product side, 2 into 2 that is 4 and lastly we have 2 chlorines on the reactant side and on the product side also I have 2 chlorines. In similar way all the three reactions are balanced. Let's look at the second and the third reaction. I have R-OH2 plus H2SO4 forming R-SO4 plus 2H2O and R-OH2 plus H2CO3 forming R-CO3 plus 2H2O. Fifth point, consequently water thus produced is free from all ions, cations and anions and is virtually distilled water. Sixth point, the water is finally freed from dissolved gases like CO2 by passing it through a degasifier which is a tar whose sides are heated and which is connected to a vacuum pump. High temperature and low pressure reduce the quantity of dissolved CO2 and O2 in water. Such softened water can be used for industrial purposes. Now let us see the exact process of what is happening with the help of a diagram. So over here as I told you we have three tars. The first tar is the cation exchanger. The second tar is the anion exchanger. And the third tar is a degasifier. So we start over here. The impure water is first passed to the anion exchanger. Over here we have gravel. So why exactly do we put gravel? Slow down the process or slow down the flow of water. So my water can flow directly from the top to the bottom. If there are no gravels, the water will flow directly from the top to the bottom and won't give enough time for the acid regeneration or the cations to react with the water. For the water to stay here for a longer time and only to drip down little by little so that the entire reaction takes place properly, there are gravels added to both the tars. So the cation exchanger reactions also happen and they get time to happen as well as the anion exchanger reactions also get the time to happen. Over here I have acids for regeneration. So all these regeneration acids are there. They go, they come in, the impure water passes from here, the reactions take place. No more ions are present in it because of the cation exchanger reaction. So what happens now after this is only water plus acid. So this washing goes, it is pumped up and what 
passes through the second tar is nothing but water plus acid this water plus acid comes in over here the anion exchange reaction happens after the anion exchange reaction happens the water drips down through the gravel so over here no acids are also there over here the ions were removed over here the acids are removed so now after removal of both ions and acids what is there in water only the dissolved gases so this washing is pumped up and see over here what we have water plus co2 and water plus all the dissolved gases this comes inside there is nothing but a steam jacket why do we have a steam jacket this third tar consists of two things high pressure and high temperature because of this the co2 will not get dissolved in the water and because of that pressure the co2 just pops out and there is an outlet for the gas to go out after this the degasifier process we get the final demineralized water or the pure water again we can say this hard water has turned into soft water but this soft water is not extremely pure so this soft water can be used for cleaning washing and industrial purposes but this soft water can't be used for drinking now we'll study about regeneration regeneration is nothing but the when the raisins get exhausted so to regenerate those raisins we need the process of regeneration to carry out the entire ion exchange process smoothly let us see what it is regeneration when the raisins get exhausted that is when their capacity to exchange h plus and oh minus ions is lost they are regenerated the exhausted cation exchanger is then regenerated by passing a dilute solution of acid through the first tar for example let us say dilute hcl or dilute h2so4 so i have rca and rmg which were already present over there because of the ion exchange process which happened so i have rca plus 2 hcl from where did i get the 2 hcl this was the dilute hcl which i added to it forms rh2 plus cacl2 this rh2 is nothing but the reason that we want now this rh2 will again help in the ion exchange process when the next time the softening of water process starts again we have rmg plus 2 hcl so now what will happen over here this 2h will go over here so we have rh2 plus mgcl2 so now this rh2 is nothing but my reason let us see the balancing of the reaction on both the sides we have rca this is one r on the reactant side one r on the product side one calcium on the reactant side one calcium on the product side two hcl so i shall have two hydrogens which are over here and two chlorines which are over here similarly it is for this one let us have a look rmg plus 2 hcl forming rh2 plus mgcl2 so r is one r is one mg is one mg is one again i have 2 hcl so over here i have cl2 and two hydrogens so h2 the washing containing cacl2 mgcl2 or caso4 mgso4 etc is passed to drain why because these are just the by products and we do not need them for the reason we only need the rh2 similarly the exhausted ion exchanger is regenerated by passing dilute solution of alkali through the second tar so over here instead of using hcl or h2so4 we'll use something like dilute naoh or dilute koh what are these these are bases we have r dash cl2 plus 2 naoh forming r dash oh twice plus 2 nacl so over here let's start balancing the reaction i have r dash over here r dash over here i have cl2 over here i have 2 cl plus 2 naoh so over here na is also 2 and oh is also 2 so in the product side also i should have 2 na and oh is twice let's see the next r dash so4 plus 2 naoh giving me r dash oh twice plus na2 so4 so over here i have r dash which is 1 over here which is 1 over here all swell i have so4 which is 1 over here it is 1 over here also i have 2 na and 2 oh why because it is 2 naoh so twice of na na2 and twice of oh which is oh twice so this is the entire reaction over here r dash oh twice and r dash oh twice are the reasons which needs to be refilled and 2 nacl and na2so4 are nothing but the by products of it so this can be passed through the drain thus washings containing nacl na2so4 are also passed to drain the regenerated raisins are then used again and this process keeps on happening so what exactly happens is i have raisins these raisins will react with impure water make it pure water once the raisins are exhausted i do the regeneration process make new raisins this new raisins will again 
help in softening of a new batch of water and this is the ion exchange process which keeps on happening we'll just look at the diagram over here i've already explained this diagram to you and did not explain this part because this we just did this is nothing but acid for regeneration and alkali for regeneration so over here we add the acids or the bases which are required for the regeneration of the raisins which will again help in the reactions of purification of water so over here in this video we learnt about the ion exchange process which is done with the help of cation exchangers and anion exchangers we also learnt the regeneration of raisins the raisins which help in the purification of water thank you so much for watching this video stay tuned to ikira and subscribe to ikira